Hello and welcome everybody. It's Karen. Thanks for stopping by. I've got a fun little card today. I am using this Doggy Did It stamp set uh, and I'm only actually going to use a couple of those images on it. I'm using the head of the dog and the tail of the dog and I'm going to reverse that tail. So I'll show you that in a bit here. And I've also used the mix and match scallop die set. So I've got a piece of cardstock that's eight and a quarter inches by one and a half inches tall. And I'm putting that in my stamp positioner and on the right hand edge of that, I'm going to stamp the head end of this uh, stamp set. I'm, I'm going to connect these if you haven't guessed. So I need to put the tail on the far left there. But as you can see, that dog is digging the wrong way. So I need to reverse that. So I have my waffle flower sticky mat that I'm going to put inside my stamp positioner here. And I'm just going to make sure it's pressed right up into that corner. If you do this, you need to have an edge or some way of identifying where to put your paper. So here I'm pressing my paper right in along those edges on the left hand side and the bottom. And I've got that tail piece or tail stamp there and I'm putting it right over top of where the head was because I want the height to be the same as the head. So then I can uh, pick it up with my stamp positioner and now I'll take this paper out and what we're going to end up doing is stamping onto that sticky mat and then we'll put this paper back in. So you can see how you're going to need to have it lined up against an edge there somehow. So I'm stamping right onto my sticky mat here and it always looks like you've got lots of ink when you go to lift this up. You'd think, oh, that'll be a perfect impression. But I find it's never as intense as I want it to be. So I'm putting that paper right in, making sure it's lined up, and then pressing really quite firmly to pick up that ink. And that's the first impression. So faint. And so definitely I'm going to stamp that again and repeat that process of uh, getting my paper lined up right along those two edges there. And then pressing down on that stamped image to pick up the ink. And this is it after two stamp stampings. So I did one more. So that's the third stamp and there it is after that. So that was enough to see where the lines were and I just took a Copic Multiliner pen and drew over um, all those lines to, just to darken them up. Now I also put my uh, stamp packaging out in front of me because I do find that really helps with some of those smaller lines just to see where everything is. So once I was happy with that, I wanted to connect those two images. So I am just drawing a couple of hilly little uh, lines or wiggles on the way to the other one just to make it look like that dog was digging down underneath, or at least that's my thought. <laughs> you may not think that. Uh, and then I'm just coloring it back in with, a, or not coloring, but going over that line with my Copic Multiliner. And then I can erase all the pencil marks. So magically it's being colored up now and I have it in my scoreboard and I'm going to score this now at two and three quarter inches and five and a half inches. And that will give me three evenly uh, spaced sections. And so then I can fold them. So that one is a mountain fold and then a valley fold. And just give them a good burnish. So that's, in my mind, <laughs> that dog has dug his way all the way through that dirt. So I've cut out a scalloped section here and matted it and thought I would put the, the dog on that, but then just looked too clean to me for a dog that had been digging. So I got out some vintage photo distress ink and I think the other was frayed burlap. And I'm just going around the edges of my card with the vintage photo and then spattering on a mix of the two inks. And I kind of uh, put some muddy spots on there and did a bit more spattering just to really, I don't know, make this look like a dog had been digging. So then I've uh, glued that scalloped uh, border down, or the mat, and I'm going to attach this image now right to the center of that. 
Now it sort of pops up, so I decided I was going to use magnets to hold it in place. But first, I wanted to make a pull tab. So I've cut that, that uh, scalloped frame out of some green cardstock and just cut a couple of sections from it and matted that with some white card that I wrote the word pull on. And I'm going to glue that right behind the head end of this car, of this image. So to stick this down, these are craft magnets now from our dollar store here in Canada. Now they are quite fat, as you'll see here. Uh, I am going to use these today, actually. You could use these neodymium magnets, but they are much more expensive. And I sort of save those for when I'm making folios. Uh, so today I am going to use those dollar store ones, but you can see the height difference there. So I've got some Beacon 3-in-1 glue. This is a solvent glue, and I'm just putting a little bead of glue there in the center, just to the left of that pull tab. And I've got my two magnets attached together, which I think is a good idea because you definitely want to have the magnets attracting side facing inward. So I've penciled in a little pencil line around my frame there, and I know that's where I'm going to want the front to go as well because they were the same size. So I'm just placing that within the pencil lines, and then I can use my pencil to kind of reach underneath and draw around that magnet. I made a bit of a mess, but I can see that that circle or semicircle is where I want the magnet to go. So I'm putting some of that glue down there as well. And now I'm going to take my magnets apart and stick the non-attracting side, the repelling side, down into that glue. So the piece that was attached to the magnet on top is facing upward. Now on the left hand edge of the tail end of this image, I'm just putting glue. Because that magnet's so big, I can't glue the whole thing down. But you can see here, when I come in close to this, those magnets will attract each other and it'll kind of uh, let me know where the magnet is because you definitely want those to be lined up when you go to stick this down. So I'm letting the magnet stick on the right and I'm just kind of eyeballing that a little bit, making sure it's centered where I wanted it to be and then I can stick the tail end down. And give that a good press. And there you can see now they will stick together. So then when you pull it out you get this fun little dog coming out and going back in. Now that doesn't have to be a dog. That could be a whole lot of little animals holding up a happy birthday. Could be a big gigantic cake or candles. Whatever you've got in your stash, go for it. So thanks for stopping by everybody. I hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you next time.